swing states last night, like the mortgage crisis that has hit states like Florida. Joining us right now uh, to weigh in on what the president presented last night in Florida is Florida Senator, uh, Senator Marco Rubio. Senator, welcome back. Good morning. So, Senator, the, the president did address those people who you represent in Florida who are maybe upside down on their mortgage but making payments that maybe they should get an immediate remortgage. Is this the right path? You know, if it's something that works where everyone would be interested in examining it, and obviously I want to see the details of these programs because they've involved a massive governmental intervention, my, my sense is it's not going to work. But let me tell you what would really work, and that's to get our economy turned around. I mean, the fundamental reason why the mortgage or, or the uh, housing market has collapsed is because there's not enough people out there buying. They're not making enough money. And the reason why a lot of people are getting foreclosed is not because they have a bad mortgage, it's because they lost their job. And Florida has been deeply impacted by unemployment. So what we need is robust economic growth. And what you didn't hear last night from the president, he didn't talk about the successes of this administration enough, because there isn't any. The fact of the matter is that for three, he didn't, you know, usually at this point in a presidential career, you're talking about some of your accomplishments and how your ideas and plans have worked. Sure. He touched on it briefly. But he really didn't delve into it because after three years he has very little he can point to and in fact all of these factors we're talking about are worse than they were three years ago well he can't point to the fact that you know he was uh senator he was there in a room uh, filled with republicans and he said uh, you know these guys are all trying to keep me from getting what i think is in the country's best interest done the president says one thing that we can do is we can raise taxes on the most successful people in the country but in the next breath he says we have to be fair is that fair? Well, let me say two things. The first is that it's important to remember that the president's been president for three years. Two of those three years, his party, the Democratic Party, controlled the House and the Senate. He could have had anything he wanted, and he got it. He got Obamacare, he got the stimulus package, he got the Wall Street regulations. And where are we today? We are worse off today than we were in January of 2009. Two of the last three years, his party controlled it. So he can't blame it on mm. Congress, unless he's blaming it on his own party. As I want to move on. Tax uh, sorry, well, I just touch on the tax issue briefly because you asked about that. Yeah. The tax issue is an important one. I have never seen a president pit Americans against each other yep. like this president does. Yeah. Well, and it's showing in the in the polls uh, that maybe it's having an effect because uh, independent voters now report strong feelings about uh, a, a divide between rich and poor, as opposed to in 2009 they didn't even really see it as an issue at all. Uh, let's move on to what's going on in Florida, because that is the state that you represent, and that's where the primary will be for the Republicans next week. I'm interested in why you're not endorsing anybody, because Romney did campaign for you down in your state. So why won't you endorse Romney or anyone else? Well, first of all, I, I speak around, I'm sorry, uh, 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 Governor Romney was helpful to me in my campaign, and, and I'm grateful for that. And Speaker Gingrich is someone I've known for a few years. He was helpful to me when I was Speaker of the Florida House. And so I decided, rather than to delve into the politics of it, let Florida voters decide. And I'm glad that this campaign is in Florida because, you know, I think we're now getting to the stage of the campaign where we're looking at the debates. And look, strong debates performance are important, and we're happy about that. But we're electing the next president of the United States. It's a very important job. And as I remind people every day, if someone in the United States Senate or someone in the, in the United States House makes a, a mistake or, or makes a careless statement, you know, they get bad press coverage. But if a president <clears throat> does that, people get hurt all over the world, perhaps. And so I think now is the time where we're starting to look, make a sober look at, okay, who do we want to put in charge of the most powerful military in human history, of the largest economy in human history? And I think Florida is, is, is well positioned to begin to help American people make that kind of decision. Well, if you can't get the Latino vote, you're not going to get Florida. They're, they are estimated 1.4 million Hispanics that are registered voters. Uh, in this election, and it's pretty close between yeah. Democrats and Republicans, 12.4 to 11.1. Uh, which one of these candidates resonate currently uh, with the Hispanic community from what you could say, Senator Rubio? Well, I think they've both made compelling arguments, but because, and here's why. The number one issue in the commu Hispanic American community is how do I leave my children better off than myself? How do I have the opportunity to fulfill my own hopes and dreams, the reasons why we came here, the reasons why our parents came here, and how do we leave our children with more opportunities than we've had? There's only one real answer to that, and that's the American free enterprise system. And that's exactly what the president is assaulting when he goes into the State of the Union yesterday and basically says that the only way that some Americans can do better is if other Americans are worse off, that we have to take from some people mm -hmm. and distribute it to others. That's never been our heritage as a people. That's what other countries do. And by the way, that's why other people, including a lot of Hispanic Americans, have left other countries to get away from that kind of stuff. Senator, just as a quick follow-up, is the reason you're not endorsing anyone is because you may be on both of those candidates' shortlist for VP? <laughs> 
No, on the contrary, some people say you should, that way you get a head start. But <laughs> the, <laughs> no, I just think it's the right choice, and I think we have good candidates. Here's what I'm confident of, is at some point here in the next few weeks, we're going to have a nominee that's going to offer a compelling contrast to the divisive politics of Barack mm -hmm. Obama. In Florida will have an impact uh, big time. All right. Uh, Senator Rubio, uh, thanks so much. Thank you, guys. He was up late last night and up early for us. Yep.